everybody, welcome back to the Sunny Day Review. I'm Brian. I'm Jillian. And Jillian, a little bit different uh, today. We're going to be covering just one episode mm-hmm. for the next few weeks to see if that kind of gives it more of time for us to review. And, you know, it's just something we're trying. You know, we, we did it with the season finale of Buffy, and I think it worked well, especially for that episode, given it was so big. We'll see if every episode of the series can kind of live up to that and if not we'll just go back to the regular format and kind of sprinkle these one-offs in yeah and uh we did receive some feedback that you know some people would like to hear us you know more on our thoughts of the episodes rather than just kind of a recap of what happened and then our little sprinkling of thoughts at the end when we give our rating so um we just want to let you guys know that we do hear that feedback um we're going to try this out for a couple of weeks see if you guys like it if you do like it, if you like hearing kind of more of our thoughts and more discussion around the episode, let us know. Um, you can do that either. I don't. Do people do like comments on the audio versions for the podcast? I think, so. I think mostly it'd just be through YouTube or Twitter. Okay, for, so if you if use. you listen if you listen to the audio version on a podcast app, um, we're on. I know like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, stuff like that. If you have comments, if you like this format, if you don't like this format and want us to go back to the old one, go hit us up over on YouTube um, or reach out to Brian on Twitter. Brian is the only one who uh, <laughs> religiously checks his Twitter. I do not. I am atrocious at Twitter. So you could reply back to the, or you can reply on this and say like, hey, um, love the new format or hey, hate the new format. And I probably won't see it for like 10 to 12 business weeks. So um, <laughs> if you love it or hate it, either throw that feedback in the comments on YouTube or hit Brian up on Twitter. Um, and you can like include me on that tweet as well. I probably won't see it. So just include him as the safest option. Um, if you want to throw me on there, we'll see how long it actually takes me to see this. Yeah. And that's of course <laughs> our Twitter handles are down below, right? Now. Yes. So that at is for Twitter. Um, for people and, who can see on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> they can see those. Yeah. Uh, if are they in the show notes? For people, if they're not, we'll just say them now. Uh, you can okay. find me at the fake Bmar. That's B M A R R, and Jill. You can I find am... her sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me. I won't necessarily see it. Um, mm. I'm on Twitter at, at uh, blah, blah, blah. hi English first language. I swear. Um, I'm at Jillian underscore Swan, and that's J I L L I A N underscore S W A N N. Yes. So. Check us out there, and uh, yeah, I think that's all we had for the preamble for this one. So I think so. Yeah, I know we hope we hope you like this new format, and we hope that it gives us you know a good amount of time to uh, give a give our thoughts and review uh, for it. So uh, yeah, I think it's important too to, to um, be open to feedback and stuff, and to like adjust. So. Hopefully uh, you guys appreciate it. We're, we're just trying to make the best show possible. So with that out of the way, we are covering Dear Boy, season two, episode number five. Originally aired October 24th, 2000, was written and directed by David Greenwalk. So we start off at the hotel and Angel is extremely tired, which is surprising given that Cordelia mentions that uh, he pretty much just sleeps all day. All the time. Um, so the with the purchase of the Hyperion Hotel, the gang is in uh, dire financial straits. Cordelia uh, kind of lays it out to Wesley as uh, we have all these fixed costs like the mortgage, my salary. And Wesley's <laughs> like, what about my salary? And she's like, how about every time you identify a demon in one of your books, we give you $10 or a chicken pot pie? <laughs> So not not going great, not going great. Well, it's like um, what happened to the what happened to the suitcase full of money that they had just two episodes ago or whatever. I guess that must have been for the down payment. I don't know. I but uh, yeah, yeah, it didn't solve their woes. That's <laughs> for sure. Um, so Cordelia has a vision of a bunch of people fighting uh, in front of a very very ugly demon. Uh, it's like a blob i believe she calls it the mush monster um it's gross it's like mashed potatoes with a face on it um and while she's going over um her description to wesley angels in the background uh with darla on top of him 
So that was a little weird, uh, but obviously it's just a dream because he snaps awake. Um, Angel thinks that he knows where the demon is because the demon's probably on Holy Land. The city bought a bunch of convents and pave over them to make an industrial park. So uh, that's where he thinks they are. And uh, he mentions that he has he had a thing for uh, convents. And I guess still does. Yeah, I mean, if they bought a bunch of convents and then paved over them, that must have been a long time ago. I don't know. The whole angel timeline thing's kind of suspect because, like, he lands in America, he's being all dirty and eating rats in New York, and then goes straight from New York to Sunnydale, as far as we're aware, but then has all this old school knowledge about Los Angeles. Although I guess he was there at some point in like 50 years ago or something for the events of are you now or have you ever been but i don't know the whole angel timeline is sometimes a little bit sketchy yeah they kind of put themselves in the corner by being like yeah he's been tortured for all the time since he's had a soul and then in this series they're like oh but it would be cool if we had him doing cool stuff in that interim instead of just being tortured so they get a little off track there. So <laughs> uh, the call-up gun and they all head over to where Angel thinks uh, this demon's likely to be. When they get there, they see all the people fighting, just like in the vision. Wesley thinks that the demon must be a Thrall demon uh, and is causing the group to fight over how best to worship it. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so they need to kill the Thrall demon to stop everyone from fighting. Because once it's dead, its thrall will be lifted. Um, they get into, they're like, well, at least they're fighting each other and not us. And then, like, the demon sees them and all of them, like, turn <laughs> and start rushing them. Um, so Gun needs Angel to watch his back, but Angel gets distracted by punching a guy repeatedly in the face. Yeah. Um, so Gun pretty much takes it upon himself to kill the demon. Um, so really score one for Gun here. Really couldn't have done it without him. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I sleep deprived angel seems to be a little spacey. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so when they're leaving, Wesley and Cordelia tell Gun that Angel has been off his, off his game. Gun's concerned because this really isn't a game. They're fighting demons and vampires, and you know, people can die. So I get yeah. that. <laughs> it's like it's a little bit life or death. Let's take yeah. this a little bit seriously. Just like just. <laughs> that much yeah <laughs> um angel leaves the group to wander around downtown where he sees darla dun, dun, dun. just walking around at night so then we get the intro and we come back to a flashback it's the 1800s and angel finds darla in a dark alley she's killed a man who's harassing a streetwalker, uh and she also killed her because you know she's evil that's just how she is um uh, Darla tells Angel about Drusilla. Um, this, you know, we, we we know Drusilla, but at the time it was just somebody who uh, Darla targeted because she had the gift of foresight and mm -hmm. she saw Angel coming, but there was nothing she could do. So it was like a very sick torture for her to see everything and not be able to stop it, which really explains a lot as to why Drusilla is the way she is. Yeah, um, and also keep in mind that, like, this is the first time we're seeing Drusilla in Angel. So anybody who hasn't seen, you know, seasons two, two, three, and four? Yeah, two, three, and four of Buffy has, like, no knowledge of Drusilla. Um, so to give just a little bit of background on Drusilla... Um, she is, I mean, I don't think this is spoilers. It happens in this, or we see it in this episode. Um, and basically, she is somebody who, again, back in the 1800s, uh, she had the gift of kind of premonitions, uh, foresight. Uh, she saw visions, basically. Um, and did she get targeted as like a witch or something? Or no, because she goes to confessional yeah basically like people tell her that she's kind of cursed 
um, and she sees things but then doesn't have the ability to try to stop them, um, which is its own kind of torture, uh, especially when it's like, you know something bad's going to happen, but you're powerless powerless to stop it. Um, so then, do we... Uh, I'm trying to remember now. Do we get into the details of how she got turned into a vampire in this episode? Yeah, it, Angel tells Darla that the best way to torture her is by turning her and torturing her for eternity. Well, that and he like slaughters her entire family in front of her, mm. which kind of cracks her in the head a bit. Yes. Um, not good. She's she's a she's a fun character, but you feel kind of bad for the way that she got there. Mm-hmm. Um oh, definitely. But yeah, so I don't know if maybe Darla saw it as like a oh, she has a gift of seeing things before they happen. Maybe if we turn her into a vampire, we can kind of keep her as a pet and she'll be able to warn us of things before they get to us or something. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I think she just kind of was like, this is kind of a messed up thing to do. We should do that. (laughs) (laughs) You know, classic Darla. It's always with the pranks of murdering people's families. And and we know that uh, Angel has a, certain uh, angelus let's be clear here angelus uh soulless angel uh is angelus uh has a certain proclivity for torture yeah he he, he enjoys it that. yeah oh man so um, Angel's very excited by this prospect, um, and then we flash back to the present day. Uh, Angel is stunned by the sighting, but he doesn't, like, follow up. He, like, just kind of like, whoa. <laughs> he just lets her walk away. Um, because, I... sorry, you say? Oh, again, tired Angel is spacey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, back at the hotel, Cordelia and Wesley are meeting with a client who is uh, very obviously being cheated on by his wife, uh, who she is saying that she's being abducted by aliens, and that's why she's not around. Um, when Angel comes back, the guy asks him if he thinks his wife is cheating on him, and Angel's just not even looking at him. He's like, probably. <laughs> um, so... Angel's clearly not sure what's real and what's not. He starts, like, feeling and sniffing Cordelia's hair. Um, Very strange. He admits to having seen Darla between uh, the clowns and the talking hot dog, which is not too much uh, to help them believe him. No, no. I mean, he could have he could have included, like, I was at a carnival. Yeah. But like no, they're like, where did you see? Where did you see Darla? Between the clowns and the talking hot dog, obviously. Come on, like, oh man, you're not doing a whole lot to help yourself here, but yeah. Uh, Angel thinks he must have been dreaming about her because she's back, uh, which Wesley counters like maybe you thought you saw her because you've been dreaming about her, uh, maybe. So um, we cut to uh, Cordelia just wants him to take the alien case to get his mind off of all of this, <laughs> which, you know, also money. She's like, yeah, what did she say? She says something along the lines of like, he's our target demo, like sad, has a master card and desperate. Like, oh, man. So then we cut back to Darla and Lindsay discussing their plans of turning Angel evil again through Darla. Um, after that, we cut over to Kate, Jill's favorite character in Angel. I, like, forget about her. I told you like, she'd be back. <laughs> I, I keep forgetting that she exists in this universe, and, like, I don't, yeah, I have a funny comment. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about, uh, the Shroud of Ramon in a couple of episodes, and I'm just like, Kate is in this episode. I completely do not remember this episode. <laughs> In fairness, it's not the best episode. No, but, uh, it's so bad. Um, but this episode's good. Dear Boy yeah. is good. True. Oh, man. So, <laughs> Kate is, has been transferred out of Los Angeles, um, and her partner is giving her a hard time for not towing the line and always going after these, you know, x file style cases, which got her sent over. Um, he gives her a file on Angel 
Angel and company are spying on the wife at a hotel, but Angel blows it and just tells her to go home, and her husband knows about all of this. <laughs> Not a great way for him to get paid. No. Very bad way. <laughs> so, well, after he does this, Angel spots Starla, who uh, says she's a different person. The hotel security tries to break up Angel, like, accosting her. Uh, she breaks away during this and runs to her husband and into the sun. And Angel is shook by this. I mean, he sees Darla, but he's only ever known Darla as a vampire. So the fact that, like, she's like, I don't know who you are. My name is something else. And also, this is my husband, and we're going to walk out into direct sunlight, and I'm not going to burst into flames. I mean... I'm kind of surprised they don't go down like a potential doppelganger type right. scenario. Just knowing from like, I don't know, I, I followed Vampire Diaries from beginning to end. Um, and like doppelgangers was such a huge thing in that show that I'm like, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't try to do that in this. Especially especially from like doppelgangland in Buffy. Yeah, maybe they felt like they do it too often in Buffy. To, they don't want to bring it over. I mean, they did it in, what, season... Is it season... Thir no. Yeah. Yeah. And season five was airing during the time that Angel season two was airing. So it had been a while. Right. But, I don't uh, know. Was um Xander's double episode during season four? Um... Season five, because he was in the new apartment, I believe. Okay, so they, they had just done, like, a double Xander episode, but, like, the fact that, like, Angel was there for, um, not Doppelgangland, but the episode where Vampire Willow came, or, no, sorry, The Wish was the one with the other universe, Doppelgangland was the one with Vampire Willow. For anybody who hasn't seen Buffy, I'm sorry it was spoiled, but you know what? Um, Angel, Angel did see Vampire Willow, at least. Yeah, so, like, the, the fact that his first thought isn't, maybe this is, like, a doppelganger, or maybe mm. they brought a Darla back from a different universe. Like, that, it is in the realm of possibility that his brain would go there, because he was there for Vampire Willow. Right. Oh, man. So, uh, the three return to the Hyperion, um, Hyperion, Hyperion. Whichever. Their the hotel. hotel. That was the problem, though. They're leaving a hotel, so I didn't know how to oh. phrase. They go back to their hotel. They go um, home. Yeah. They just go home. Cordelia and Wesley are so not convinced, but Angel is. Uh, he asks them to find the address of the lady Darla's pretending to be, and he goes to Lauren's bar to get a read. Once there, he sings, Everybody have fun tonight, terribly. Um, and Lauren refuses to read him because he's too, like, desperate. It's like, if you're going to sing that song, you got to give it a little bit of energy. And he's just like, I he he approaches it in a, I just need to get through this so that Lauren will tell me what I need to know. Mm -hmm. He, he actually it. turns it off at one point. And he's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> he does it in the most, like, desperate, like, rushed way possible and it's just like you're not putting any heart and soul into this oh man so he calls cordelia who reluctantly gives angel the address uh and cordelia and wesley bring in gun to potentially stop angel from doing whatever he's doing there's also a fun moment where cordelia like gives the thing gives the address and hangs up and wesley's like wow, you really stood up to him and then like mocks her. Like, I'm not going to fold like you did. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> they have such a sibling relationship and yeah. I love it. Too. Um, <laughs> so Angel is spying on Darla and her husband, Steven in the house, who it turns out is actually just a really annoying actor. Um, back in the hotel, Cordy and Wesley fill gun in on Angelus. <laughs> Which, uh, Gunn had just accepted that vampires could be good. I don't think he was ready to accept that Angel could potentially become evil on top of all of this. And used to be pretty much as bad as they come. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, but only when he was with Darla. He's like, and who's he going for right now? 
Oh, man. So yeah. go back to the flashback. Um, we see the night that Angel turned Drusilla uh, back in the present with, you know, all the stuff we talked about earlier in the episode, why he wanted to do that. Um, back in the present, Darla calls the police and her bodyguard uh, from Wolfram and Hart, who is a vampire, punches her and then kills Steven by, you know, drinking his blood. So rip Steven. Just wanted to, you know, he was in a very hard industry. He just wanted to get a role, get paid, but, you know, it wasn't to be. Honestly, I think Wolfram and Hart would have killed him anyway. Right. Angel busts in to try to stop that. Uh, he's not there in time. The cops um, who have gotten a call from Darla earlier uh, come in to see Angel standing over the dead Steven and the bruised Darla. Oops. Yep. <laughs> um, Angel escapes, vowing that she'll pay for this as he's getting shot as he's running away. Um, we see Darla talking to Kate. Um, Kate vows to find Angel and make him pay for what he did. Uh, when she turns around, Angel, like, ninja, like, grabs Darla and pulls her up into a tree that he's in. It's a pretty silly shot, but it, I guess it gets the job done. Um... So the cops storm the hotel with Kate, and while that's happening, Angel brings Darla back to the industrial plant from earlier in the episode. Angel figures uh, they brought her back as a human because Wolfram and Hart don't believe that he'll kill a human, but he's definitely saying that he will. Um, Angel, I wrote he starts biting, but he really like drags his fangs like across like her collarbone, and then they start making out. Uh, it's a lot of, there's a lot to unpack here. So isn't the whole thing that like she keeps trying to say, no, I'm not Darla, I'm this other person, mm. blah, blah, blah. And he's like, <laughs> bull. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then he does that and she pretty much is just like, you know, there's my boy. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, they start making out. Um, Darla says, yeah, says there's my boy. And they continue to make out before it cuts away. Kate is pulling Gunn's record and tries to turn him against um, Cordelia and Wesley. Kate tells him that Angel broke down the door and barged in <laughs> and is like, listen, I know you guys think he's, you know, great or nice now, but he's still a vampire. And Gunn's like, yeah, he is a vampire. And Cordelia's like, it's not helping Gunn. He's like, no, he's a vampire. So how would he have gotten in? Did she invite him? And they're like, no. He's like, well, the only way that would happen is if the people who owned the house were dead. Uh, so get on Gun for sussing this out. Gun's um, really good at putting like two and two together. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, he takes no bullshit. He just like is very like that doesn't make any sense. Like, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. I I appreciate Gun. I feel like he's kind of like the he. In some ways, he's kind of the Xander of the group. Not in the, like, okay, not in the, like, accident-prone, always the one getting kind of beaten up worse in this fight than anybody else. Like, Wesley definitely takes that piece of Xander, but the way that Xander kind of is able to step back from the main conflict and, like, see a lot of stuff and sometimes has these moments where he is just like, wait, 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 wait. But you're saying this, and you're saying this. Those two things don't make sense because of, let's remind all the audience, the logic of how this universe works and why something in this situation is bullshit. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> um, so they go back to the, or the camera goes back to the industrial park. Angel breaks off the makeout session. Um, Darla tells him that they want to turn him evil. Angel reminds her that she's a human now with a soul. And sooner or later, she's going to start feeling very bad for all the things that she did. Um, she argues that human or vampire, they are who they are. Uh, he tells her that she can't turn him evil because he's never been happy with her. Which is just a real, like, oof. <laughs> real blow. Um... But then he says uh, it's because he didn't have a soul when they were together, so he couldn't be truly happy. Mm -hmm. um, he tells her that, or sorry, I just read that line. Um, 
she still tries to convince him that this do good uh, life is no way for you know him to live because he's in jealous. He's supposed to be like evil. He's the worst of the worst. And she says, no one could keep up with you, not even me. So back at the hotel, Kate is still not convinced about Angel being good. Um, Darla and Angel are still together in the park as the sun comes up. Angel tries to convince her that she's going to um, see what he's talking about and she's going to like really feel bad for her actions. Um, she uses a cross to get away, burning him, and says, See, no, ha- no matter how good a boy you are, God doesn't want you, but I still do. And then she flees off into the daylight. Angel returns to the hotel and sits brooding in his room. Cordy and Wesley come to check on him with a tranquilizer, of course. You know, just in case. (laughs) Uh, He isn't bad, and he invites Wolfram and Hart to bring whatever they have planned for him on. And that is the end of the episode. So, Joe, what are your thoughts, and what's your rating? Um, I like this one. Uh, I think the whole, let's pretend that Darla's somebody else, blah, 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 thing is kind of dumb. Um... I appreciate that Gunn points out the plot hole in that, or the, the plot hole in Wolfram and Hart's story, which then leads to them realizing that, like, it was bullshit. Um, mm. I'd give this one an eight. An eight. That's what I give it as well. I think um, it does touch on a lot of interesting things, especially about, like, that we've talked about on this show. Um, are you the same person with a soul or with you know, as a vampire, are vampires capable of changing or the, you know, human or not always evil? It seems like Darla is certainly in this episode straying toward like, yeah, I'm a human, but I'm still the evil, you know, self-centered person I was then. And just because he just because Angel has a soul, she doesn't feel like he has to be a, probably as she would put it, like a whiny bitch about everything. <laughs> um so, you know, I, I like I like that. And I think it's really interesting that uh, by bringing Darla back, we get a lot of like the same kind of themes that Angel had in Buffy, but without having to have Buffy. You know, this is a person that he has strong feelings for, that he really represents him at his worst, where maybe Buffy represented him at his best. And, you know, it's just interesting. I really like um, their dynamic and how it has kind of driven Angel slowly crazy during all this. <laughs> Understandably so. Yeah, I... I I have something I want to say along the lines of what you were just saying. However, it... It's a lot more relevant when we talk about the episode Darla. Um, so... Yeah, I think I'm gonna save it for that. Make sure you tune in for that, just because I feel like some of the th- some of the flashbacks that we see in those episodes kind of tie into what you were just saying. And yeah, I'll address it in that episode because it's gonna be it's gonna have a lot more context around it. But um, I I definitely see what you're saying, and I I I think that in a way it's like Darla sees this opportunity, like sees her coming back as an opportunity to get back with Angel. Um, I think that it's, it's kind of interesting because we, when we see Angel get resold, it's almost like because he was a vampire getting his soul back all at once, like it, it definitely hit him a lot harder. I don't know if Darla, you know, being through the trauma of being brought back from death, um, you know, in a new human body that feels very alien to her. I I don't know if it causes her soul to hit her not quite as hard and fast. Um, maybe the the vampire body can process it more quickly, or maybe she was just going through a lot when she first came back that it didn't hit her right away. Um, but I, I definitely think that there's kind of a... a a major difference between the way that newly ensouled Angel reacted versus newly brought back and reinsold Darla reacts, which I think is interesting. Yeah, I th- I don't know if it's like 
the influence of Wolfram and Hart being like, yeah, bad is good. This is great. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, it is great. Um, but, you know, we'll see how much her, uh, how much she's influenced by Angel's speech in this episode going forward. So that'll be yep. something good to track. So other than that, you know, have anything else you want to touch on for this episode? Um, nope. Nope, I'm good. Um, like we said at the, at the top of the show, if you want to hit us up on Twitter, uh, you can reach out to me. I'm at Jillian underscore Swan. That's Swan with two N's. Uh, I will get back to you in potentially 10 to 12 business weeks. I'm really bad at Twitter. Um, it's yeah, I, I just, I'm, I'm just sorry. Um, but yeah, so if you want to reach out to us at all, um, or if you want to reach out to the show, reach out to Brian. He's on Twitter a lot more than I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so uh yeah reach out to brian if you want to reach out to the show if you if you need anything in a um reasonable amount of time <laughs> right oh man yeah so like like jill said reach out to me on twitter at the fake bmarless b-m-a-r-r follow the channel on twitter at wg everything on instagram at wicked good everything on twitch at twitch.tv slash wicked good everything and on tiktok at wicked good everything uh, putting that back in the rotation because it, it seems pretty safe that TikTok's not going anywhere now. Um, and I want to get more into making stuff for that. So we shall see if I actually do that or if it's just an empty statement. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, rate us on iTunes, Spotify, all that. Tell your friends and your enemies about the Sunny Dell Review. And we will see you in the next one. The Sunnydale Review is a Wicked Good Everything production. Fan art of Buffy was created by Fishbone Art. The logo was created by Tamar Kutab. The original intro and outro song was created by Alex Carl.